<laughs> it's weird with the coffee. It is a little weird because I'm not used to like doing it. Um, posed like this. I feel like I'm in a job interview. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. <laughs> You're going to do great. Okay. Let's start this thing. Carry away. Hi, welcome back to Johnson Branch Farm. I'm Rachel. I'm Aaron. And it has been almost exactly one year since we've moved our single wide jar property. Uh, let's see, a lot has changed to the homestead. And we get a lot of frequently asked questions on our channel. And back when I originally did the recording and the videoing for the remodel, I had no idea this channel was going to grow like this and I really had no idea what I was doing as far as um, filming goes. So um, we just wanted to go through and kind of touch on some of the stuff that gets asked as well as sort of what our to-do list is and what our future plans are here on the farm. So the first question we get asked a lot are paint colors. What color did we end up painting the main walls? Can I answer that? What color did we use? We used, I think it's called Toasty Gray is the name of the color and we've painted it in uh, I think three different houses, even a couple jobs that um, I've done. When they asked me for a gray, that was kind of the color that I've, that I've picked. Uh, it, it really goes with everything, um, so that is the color that we we picked. It just worked really, really well. I know finding a gray color to fit can sometimes be hard, and when we found this color, it just seemed to go really with everything that we wanted, and wanted to look like it's a really neutral color, so toasty gray. Uh, and we got all of our paint. Our town only has a Home Depot. Um, it has a couple different places, but as far as a big store, it has a Home Depot, and that's mostly where I get my stuff from. So they have bare paint, so that's the that's the color that we use was Toasty Gray from Home Depot. And then what kind of flooring? Because we get a lot of comments about the flooring because the flooring looks super expensive, but it was like Home Depot's generic, I think we paid 99 cents a square foot for mm -hmm. the flooring. Um, but we are really shocked at how well it's really held up. It's held up. I was kind of nervous because, so again, it's a laminate flooring. So it's a laminated wood. It's not a vinyl, you know. So there's two different things when you're doing flooring. You might want to do the research and find out what works best for you. I personally would have rather had a laminate. Um, this stuff was, I like the color of it. And again, it was 99 cents a square foot. You also had to add in, I had to put an underlayment underneath it. Some of the more expensive flooring comes with underlayment already. This did not, so I had to put that underneath it. So that added, I think it was 20, 20 or 29 cents, cents yeah. a square foot. So you gotta kinda add that in when you're doing it. I also like vinyl better because it's a little more um, tolerant to moisture so it doesn't swell and it doesn't shrink and contract as much um, or expand, I mean. Uh, so anyhow, we put the cheapest stuff. I think it was home decorations from Home Depot. Um, it was Ann Arbor Oak was the color of the flooring. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was, you know, flooring has different width or six inch widths. Um, it went together pretty, pretty nice. I prefer laminate. I mean, I prefer vinyl, but that is what we put in the house. Um, and it has held up really good. Again, we put it in all of our, about the whole, there's mm -hmm. 1200 square foot. And it's all the same, that, that flooring went in every bathroom, living room, every room in the house has the exact same thing. And I was nervous about it, really in the bathroom was where I was kind of nervous about it. And it's been a year and it, has, it hasn't swollen. Mm -hmm. It hasn't done anything abnormal. It's not scratched. It, it really did. I was kind of expecting to have to go back and redo just the bathrooms eventually. Um, and again, it's been a year. We haven't had any issues. So yeah. we probably will eventually, but at the time it was kind of, we were on a, as she was saying earlier, it looks a lot different than when we first started. 
we were kind of in a time crunch um, and we didn't do a whole lot of videoing and I was just trying to knock out as much as I could every day. I would work from dark to dark every day and um, I, I, to be, I didn't really even care about videos. I was just like, man, I've got to get this done. We've got to get out of that camper. <laughs> we, we were living in the camper. Winter was coming um, and we had a lot to do. So I was just trying to knock out as much as I could. So while we were doing the flooring, I just did all the flooring the same. I like nice clean lines. I didn't want a bunch of different transitions and different colors. I like the one, I like the seamless kind of look where every all the flooring is the same in all of the house. I like that. Um, so I'm really happy that that flooring worked out the way that it did. Um, one more thought about the paint. We did the paint in a eggshell finish? I think we did eggshell. Okay, we did eggshell. That's what I thought. Because we wanted to be able to wipe down walls, but we didn't want the walls to look super shiny either. So another question we get asked a lot is how did we do the kitchen cabinets? So we did not replace the kitchen cabinets. Those are original to the mobile home and it's a 1995. So they're the original cabinets. For what they are, they were in pretty good shape. So we felt it was worth um, painting as well as budget wise. Paint is a whole lot cheaper. Um, but I'll let you go ahead and explain again because that's more of a the color we did on the top was white and then we did um, blueprint by bear for the bottom and then we just went ahead and re-laminated the countertop so those are the original countertops as well um, the only thing we ended up having to replace was the sink and the appliances in the kitchen <clears throat> we didn't have to replace them there wasn't anything wrong with them Right. It was just a pretty tiny sink and we wanted something bigger. So mm -hmm. we were already going to cover the countertops. So we just went ahead and ripped the sink up, cut the hole bigger, put a new sink in. Actually, we put the Formica in and then put a new sink in. Yeah. Um, which was definitely a good choice. As far as painting the cabinet, so what I did when we first gutted the trailer, we took carpet out. I had everything taped off, all the windows. Um, I didn't even care if I got paint on the countertops because I was going to re-famica them. Um, so the house was really kind of prepped for paint. We had done all the drywall work and we'll get to that kind of in a minute. Um, so that was already done. I didn't have any of the flooring in. The only thing I taped off was the windows and the showers and everything else got, got painted. It was um, this drywall that they used for the trailer. It had... Um, like a wallpaper on it already like came from the factory that way they didn't actually roll it came with it on it mm -hmm. so what I did I did two coats of oil-based kills and I kills the ceiling and all the walls in the cabinets inside and outside so I did I literally kills the whole house um, again ceiling walls doors cabinets all our interior doors I put two coats of kills on everything once that dried, I came back in, and again, we get everything from Home Depot, um, or we did on this fix. And I just got white bare paint, um, interior paint, off of the shelf, and I painted all of our interior doors, cabinets, and ceilings all the same white. And I know a lot of people paint um, ceilings a different color than their trim and their cabinets. I know everybody, most people do because it's more of a flat color. Um, you honestly can't tell, and it saved me a lot of work when I painted, because we have a little piece of trim that goes around the upper of the whole house and the ceiling. So all of our trim, our baseboards, cabinets, ceiling, and doors are all the same color white. I didn't want to buy a bunch of different colors. I didn't want to have to cut in a bunch of different colors. And it, honestly, nobody's ever said anything about the mm -hmm. ceiling not being a flat because we kind of did eggshell anyway so it was already a little on the flat side um, and it, it saved me a whole it saved a whole step again I was using a sprayer for everything I sprayed the whole house it took I think an hour and a half to do one coat on the whole house spraying um, so that's what I did so the cabinets have the same everything has the same kind of formula everything got two coats of oil based kills and then it got two coats of um, I don't know if I said that earlier two coats of white and that's how we left it and it has seemed to hold up really well for what we did it held up really well and on that the cabinets have like almost a laminate sticker over them that gives it the wood look we didn't vinegar we didn't we didn't treat that we just wiped it all down and then just yeah wiped it down and then 
painted over it. So there was really no additional prep work that we had done. And so far, so good. A year later, I'm able to clean and scrub the cabinets and paint's not chipping and peeling off or, you know, having any of those horror stories you see. Um, and then after he did the white, we were able to just do the blue right over it. Yeah, I came back with the, so the uppers are white, the bottoms. I set a four inch foam roller and I painted the bottom cabinets. I did two coats of that too. And that, it goes pretty fast. The little mm -hmm. foam rollers are, looks way better than a brush and you can do it way faster yeah. with a brush. I also caulked all the cabinets, all the door faces and I caulked everything. I think I put, I think I used like 16 tubes of caulk in the whole house. I caulked everything. everything. Um, and it made it look a lot better. All right, so we went through the paint, we went through the flooring, we went through the cabinets. Do you want to talk about how we removed the drywall strips? Yeah. So the drywall strips, we get a lot of questions about that and what I did to fix it. Most people, it was a lot of work. It really wasn't a lot of hard work. It was very, very time consuming because it's kind of a tedious process, mm -hmm. but it was absolutely worth it. Um, and I did make one mistake and I'll tell you about that in a minute, something I wish I would have done more. Yeah. Um, so all the strips, it's really where the drywall just, you know, it butts up and they put just a thin strip over it so that they don't have to take the time to mud it and finish it. So that's really all you were doing is mm -hmm. just finishing kind of what they already started. So it was really already prepped. So I just, I pulled all the strips off. It was all stapled in. I had a bag of, um, this is the first time I've ever done drywall and my uncle helped me. He walked me through it. So when you go to the drywall section of Home Depot, they have pre-mixed mud and they have kind of mud in a bag. And so for the first coat, they have, I think, a 20-minute mud, a 45-minute mud, and a 90-minute mud. And that's the time it takes to get hard. So we use 90-minute mud for our very first coat to fill in all that we had to buy, the tape, drywall tape. So we taped all the seams. We filled them all in with that 90-minute mud. And once it dried, um, and there's a lot of YouTube videos. That's all I did was watch YouTube videos on how to finish drywall, um, on the seams especially. And... Uh, so we did one coat with the 90 minute mud, let it dry, sanded it all down, and then did two more coats on top of that. And they think, I think they dried for a day of the pre-mixed, it comes in a five gallon bucket, the pre-mixed mud, um, and that's what we used. I had to buy, a, I think a six, a 10, and a 12 inch um, knife from Home Depot and a pan to do all my drywall. Again, I'm not a drywall expert, um, but I would encourage anybody that wants to try it, don't be scared of it. It's really a lot easier than it looks. And if you mess up, it's just a lot of sanding to fix it. So it can be fixed. It's not a big deal. You just have to take a little more time uh, and sand it. So that's really what we did. It was a pretty simple process. Again, it was we used a 90-minute mud because I'm pretty slow. So I wanted the most amount of time uh, for the drywall to, for, to, for it to cure because I'm not that fast. Um, and I think it took three days, three, four days just for that process well, and that's what i was cold. saying yeah it was cold out and it took mm -hmm. a long because you have to wait power. for it to dry All right no i didn't have any power in the house only the heat we had it was really cold the only heat we had was uh, just a gas fireplace yeah and the mistake that i made was i didn't do any um so the walls are pretty smooth and then i mudded over them and when the light hits the wall like in the hallway you can see every joint that i mudded you can't see it when it's dark not even when it's dark but when the sun really hits it, you can see kind of those joints. So I wish I would have, um, I didn't spray texture anything, mm -hmm. but I wish I would have used, I used a, like a smooth or semi-smooth roller. When I roll, I sprayed everything white. And when I went to finish with the gray, I rolled all that on because I didn't want to tape everything off. Um, again, I wish I would have used like an extra heavy nap roller to, roller to actually put texture on the walls with the roller and it would have covered up 90% of the imperfections mm -hmm. and you honestly would have never known anything even with all the drywall you could tell where when the kids um, we pulled off the strips we beat all the nails in or pulled them out and you can see some of the hammer marks because the kids wanted to do it um, which I have no issue with that but you can see some of the hammer and um, marks in the wall so it would have been nice to have that heavy nap roller to just roll over the walls to make it look even better. Mm -hmm. Most people probably wouldn't notice, but since I did it and I <laughs> live in the house, I see it all the time. And that's one thing if I was like, man, if I could go back and done that step, I already had to roll the walls. Yeah. I just wish I would have bought a heavier nap roller to give it a little bit of texture and make it look better. Wish I would have done that. Yeah. 
and from like a woman's perspective, you know, decorating and stuff, I can honestly say removing the strips really was the right choice because here it just kind of it changed the feel of the house. Um, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So if you're in that position and you're remodeling it, you have the option to do it. We definitely feel like it's worth taking that extra step and getting the strips off of there because it just really changed the look and the dynamic of the inside of the house. It probably cost us a hundred bucks. Yeah. With buying the knives, buying the drywall and everything. It was probably another hundred dollars, um, which I feel was absolutely worth mm -hmm. it. Because um, it makes the house feel like a home. It makes you feel like you're in a in an actual home. Right. It is a home no matter what right. how you look at it, but it makes you feel like you're in, you know, a home and not a mobile anymore. So anything else other than the texture that you would have done different to the entire house? No, I think that's it for me. That's the only thing I really yeah. You got another egg? Yeah. Alright. That's perfect. I can't think of anything else that we would have done. I don't know that I would have done the white uppers and the blue lowers. I do regret. I mean, the blue is really pretty, but the white, even, I thought them just being on the uppers, it wouldn't get that dirty because we would be the only ones handling it, not the kids. But man, it's just stuff splatters and it's a kitchen and we, I was canning this year and we cook a lot of our meals from scratch and yeah. So, I swore I would not do white anything, and yeah. I did a lot of white. So for me, I wish I would have done uh, like a dark gray, even doors. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a different color tone gray trim indoors, and then a little lighter on the walls or found. You put the A in the A color. <laughs> Thank you, Gracie. Or a little different color scheme for just for us personally. I love yeah. white. It looks amazing. White is really is a really clean. awesome color. It's a really clean color, but for us. I totally regret white. Yeah. Even Trent, I'm talking about anything white, I would eliminate all white. Because this really is a farmhouse and the definition of we're a farm and this is our house and dirt and Georgia clay gets tracked in and so yeah, that's become a challenge. But again, that's not, that's not anything that you wouldn't normally encounter in a stick frame house. So I probably uh, would do the cabinets a different color mm -hmm. and I'm still thinking I'm going to because that's the great thing about paint is there's not really any commitment um, so I'm looking at paint colors and kind of playing around with the idea of changing the cabinets so that's Let's it for see. me as far as would I do anything different no that was it I would have textured the walls with the heavy nap roller probably wouldn't have done white mm -hmm. um, again for our lifestyle we live in our home and we um, we're in and out of the house all day long and with kids and they go out and play with the animals and they come in there's just, you know, smear marks on the walls and on the doors and that's not a big deal. You just have to clean okay. a lot more often. Uh, what else do we want to do to the house? Because we're not finished. There's still a list of things that need to get done. I need to definitely still paint the doors. <laughs> I'm having a hard time committing to a color. <laughs> And um, we need to replace the windows. Those desperately need to be replaced and trimmed out. What else do we want to do? That's what I would do. The windows are horrible. I mean, Levi literally backed into one the other day and broke it. And they're, it's a horrible design. They're mm -hmm. horrible windows. Um, so I called and got a price for double pane vinyl windows with screens in them the other day. So for me, I would definitely do the windows. The windows are horrible. They sweat, um, and so it just creates almost a moisture issue. So I would definitely change the windows, and then once the windows are changed, then we can actually frame them out and trim them out, and it'll look it'll look a lot better. I'll cover up all the screw holes with trim, and it'll look more like a like an actual stick built home at that point. So definitely want to change the windows. Again, they're horrible. They leak, not leak water, but they are really thin so they sweat so you always have to dry them off with a towel and so that's kind of an issue um so that's one thing i would want to do and i think eventually i would like to put a probably a roof over it um which is not really hard it's just it's a little time consuming to take a couple days i would like to do that and then to, just to give it one more layer of kind of insulation a little yeah. kind of an air barrier um there's nothing wrong with the roof there's not a hole in it or anything like that i just i would rather have a roof 
over it and then when we do that change all these little gutters because they're like little two inch gutters and they're horrible um, so i would do windows gutters put a roof on it and then our porch is 10 by 20 and then i would add a carport on um, i do not like my truck sitting outside you know it's like sleeping outside without a blanket i do not like it being outside without a roof over it uh, i just don't like it snowed on and iced on and all that and it's not a big deal i just personally don't like it so those are the couple things I look forward to do in the future is adding get a carport up. on, changing the windows get out, up, and a roof hey. over it. Other than that, I'm really not doing get anything up. else. And honestly, none of that is a huge priority. The biggest the thing we'll do next is definitely the windows because that's kind of uh, it's not an issue, but they're really, they're really horrible windows. Yeah, and they're ugly. It looks the bad. It looks bad from the inside. You see the screw holes and around the screens it. are ripped. And they're horrendous. They're 25 years old, and they're definitely showing their age. This are forever and all be all. You know, people ask that too because they look at um, mobile homes as like a temporary home, or they're not meant to last. You know, decades, things like that. And I mean, honestly, we can't say yes or no because. You know, our story's not over yet. <laughs> um, God's still in control, so mm -hmm. anything could happen. But as far as being content where we are right now, absolutely. Yeah, it really There's no is. hurry. No, we're not in a rush. This was, we got a lot of bang for our buck, I guess if you want to call it that. Um, we don't have a whole lot of money invested, and that's part of the reason we kind of, I don't want to say cheaped out. We try to do the, make it look the best for the money involved. Mm -hmm. And then I think the windows are going to be when I priced it. I don't say it was. Eighteen hundred. I think it was eighteen hundred bucks, and that was for like fourteen or sixteen. I think fourteen windows, all double pane, mm -hmm. um, vinyl windows. That does not include the trim. So it's a little bit of a cost, but I think it's going to help with being a little more efficient and all that. Yeah. Um, I don't have any problem living here. It doesn't bother me at all. I could live here forever. I don't know if we will or not. I really have no idea what the future holds, but I'm very happy here. It's mm -hmm. it's safe. I don't worry about um, if I have to go out of town. I don't worry about something happening to my family. I'm very. I feel very safe here. Um, so there's no problems. No. No problems on my end. Yeah, I mean it's been a great home. It's been a great investment. It's even it's funny too because people want to know you know what's your power bill and we get so many weird random questions. Which is actually really. Our power bill is less than what it was when we were living in the camper. Like, it averages probably $100 a month for when it's hot or when it's cold. Right. And we have propane heat, so that definitely helps with the electric. Now, you got to pay for the propane, but it feels like it heats it more efficient. The little gas fireplace we have in the living room, most of the time, is all we really need. Yeah. Um so definitely been happy with it definitely feel like for this season of life and what we're doing this was the right choice our goal all along was not to be house poor and we're definitely not with this um so it's giving us a chance to get to a position where we can pay the land off and get the farm and the homestead up and running and still be able to meet our goals right. another thing with the power we have and I think this makes a pretty big difference. We have a gas oven and we cook, oh, yeah. we cook a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to run a new outlet for the stove because it was 220. I had to put a 110 outlet in for the gas. So I think that cuts down our electric bill. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Substantially, I feel like. Yeah. So again, the gas heat really does a great job. We use, again, mm -hmm. we have a gas fireplace kind of in the middle of the house. And we found that when you use that gas fireplace, it doesn't use a lot of gas. And it heats up the house really well. Um, so we'll turn the big, um, not fireplace. The furnace. The heater on. We'll actually turn the heater on. And it's gas too. When it gets really cold and it stays cold for a long time. Um, or we'll kick it on for 10 minutes just to kind of knock the chill out of the house. And then that little gas fireplace really helps a lot with mm -hmm. power. And and it is it is a, um, pretty efficient. I still have little, other little touches though. Like I want a backsplash in the kitchen. Mm. Definitely, because with cooking and stuff, it's just easy to keep clean. We talked about replacing our shower, but I mean, like, all of that's not anything that's you wouldn't normally want to do. It's not anything right. out of the ordinary, so. That's one thing I didn't fool with at all. We, we updated toilets and vanities. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't do anything with the showers. They really weren't bad. 
the hardware is the mobile home hardware and I updated that but even the updated version is still not it's okay so eventually yeah. we'll do the showers one day they're both tubs I don't like a tub I would probably <laughs> put a walk-in shower in ours and where the where it used to be I'd probably do a walk-in shower and then another closet in our yeah. bathroom versus having a huge walk-in shower I probably wouldn't wouldn't do that um, it is nice having a tub in the kids bathroom but I might even put a shower in there too yeah but I think we have to have a tub I think it's building code. <laughs> if we ever want to, like, because we have talked about if, you know, we were going to do something different, you know, selling this and letting somebody else move it to their property. So, so we'll see. That would be something we'll probably do eventually is do something different with the, with the showers. Yeah. Again, that's not a real big deal for me. Um, there's nothing... Literally, there's nothing wrong with them. I would rather have a walk-in shower personally, so we might do that eventually. So here we are a year later, no regrets. Learned a lot. <laughs> I think whenever you take on something like this, you definitely learn and know what you would want to do next time or figure out ways to make it better. It's always a learning and growing experience, but we are super happy with what we've done. We're very thankful and grateful we definitely give God all the credit and glory for bringing us this far and blessing us with what we've needed and help along the way because this, this definitely wasn't something we could just do ourselves. Right. Friends and family definitely pitched in and helped us with that. So we're thankful to them and to him for what he's doing in our lives. Don't be scared. One thing I want to say is this, you know, all the projects we're doing around here, a lot of it I have not done before. Um, most of it is all first time for me. And not, even though I might have grown up working with my dad and uncles and cousins, whatever I've done, it was really the first time kind of doing it on my own. Um, so I want to encourage you to, to not be scared of that. Um, I have We have accomplished a lot. And don't be scared to try it yourself. Mm -hmm. I had a friend of mine one time, and he kind of changed the way I think a little bit. And he was going to build a shed at his house. And I was like, dude, have you ever built a shed before? And he was like, no, I've never built anything like that before, but I'm going to try it. And he said, he said, man, you see that house right there? We were on a job. And I was like, yeah. And he said, a man built that house just like me, no different than me. And if he can do it, I can do it. Okay. And I was like, you know what? You're exactly right. And I've kind of carried that motto into all of this. And I often hear that in my mind, like I'm not a drywaller, but I can do that. Yeah. So I want to encourage you, don't don't be scared to try it. Um, there's a lot of great information out there. There's a lot of YouTube videos <laughs> and just have confidence in yourself. You're gonna do great. People have been doing this for a long time. You save a lot of money, you gain a lot of knowledge doing it yourself because it, you can take it into all aspects of everything that we've done. And we've built all kinds of buildings here. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to not be scared and to try try it yourself don't be scared to try it yourself that's it that's it <laughs> the, job, the job interview's over that's all <laughs> thank you for watching thank you for following along um and for commenting on all our videos we're so appreciative of every single one of you that take time out of your day to watch these and to support our channel and um, what we're doing and we'll see you on the next video